So for the modeling stage, let's open up Blender and let's get into it. Uh, just to note before we begin, to avoid any discrepancies, I'm using Blender version 2.90.1 and I'm not using the native Blender key map because my history is 3ds Max. So I've learned Blender using the industry standard key map preference. So if you're not and you're not familiar with the keys I'm pressing uh, because you're using the native key map, don't worry, I'll have the screencast keys up so you can see what I'm clicking as I do it to help you translate what I'm doing a little bit. Um, with that being said, let me turn those on now. So you should be able to see me. So, um, yeah, there you go. Just to the side here, you should see what I'm pressing there. So the first thing I wanna do is to load in my side reference, this reference here into Blender. Uh, I'm just gonna move my reference to my other monitor. I'm just going to bring up my quick favorites and I've got a bunch of shortcuts here that I've mapped to shift tab um, and I want to import and images as planes and I believe this particular import setting is a free add-on. Um, I don't know um, whether it was in preferences, let me have a look. Yeah, there we go, it's a Blender add-on. Um, I highly recommend you uh, uh, turn this add-on on when you're working from reference, um, mainly because when you load in a reference, um, it will automatically have the sizes correct um, and everything is golden. You can get carry on modeling straight away and not have to worry about the size of the plane it generates. Um, so I'm just going to go find it now. So to begin with, you'll notice that it's completely blank and that is because we need to go into the textured mode, um, viewport shading and material preview. And then we just need to rotate that uh, 90 degrees. If you're new to Blender and you're wondering how do I know how far the rotation is, it's just in the right hand, uh, left hand corner at the top. So whenever I rotate, you'll see the, the rotation amount there, or you can see it in um, the transform tab you could do it from there yourself but I just do it um, for the top left hand corner it's quicker for me and instead of having it straight um, on in the middle um, I want to offset it a little bit just so anything that I create will be um, in the middle of the scene and what we're going to focus on if we go into um, orthographic uh, mode we're just going to focus on the big piece here the main hand grip where the trigger would be and there's numerous ways we could do this uh, but first of all before I do, uh, do anything um, we need to turn this to freeze like if you're from 3ds max background like I am I would tend to freeze the references that I have so I don't actually accidentally select them and move them around and Blender does have something similar to this um, and it just may it's just called well you won't be able to select it um, disable selection and that's automatically I believe turned off and you just go to this little filter tab here and turn on the selectable um, and then you can just turn that off and now I can't can't move it at all. So <laughs> I thought about how to model this, model this section whilst I was trying to rock my baby to sleep. And I think I'm just going to um, start off with a cube. Now I've mapped it to my quick fav favorites and we're just going to scale it down. Uh, 
Um, one thing to know as well is it's um, when you're in orthographic mode at the front and you want to select all the verts, um, you'll sometimes notice that you can't select them all at once when there's if there's someone um, behind uh, a vertex or a face selection and this is because you need to be in x-ray mode I've mapped it to shift x or you can um, I b believe you can get it from where is it um, somewhere here I'm pretty sure it's here it's not so um, it is here this is x-ray mode and that enables you to select all the verts behind. Uh, as you can see, um, the edges and the verts there and the faces, whereas you can't see it before. I'm just going to essentially just, because this isn't a true side on reference, it's at an angle, you're just going to have to guess um, at the placement of it. But I'm just going to follow the general shape of it. I'm just going to select that face, delete it, and I'm just going to essentially just edge modulate with Control E to um, extrude um, the edge. I'm just going to guess the shape of it. Uh, I'm not going to worry all that much about writing the details like this because I can just do that through. Um, booleans Um, as you'll know, you'll you'll notice that I'm I'm not completely going around perfectly because I can just bevel those particular edges in um, afterwards. I'm just getting the general shape down first. I'm just bridging those faces to get um, edges together. Whoops. Just um, target welding those um, verts um, together. And now we pretty much have the basic shape. So I'm just going to select that entire loop and then press Control F. If you haven't got, um, where is it? Um, I think it's called Loop Tools. Yeah, loop tools and saw. So I'll I, I highly recommend um, enabling it because it comes with some nice um, tools to use. Um, so, in fact, there is another way of viewing this texture on a grey background, which will enable us to use um, X-ray mode more uh, more accurately. Um, is that if you go into um, 
solid shading mode and then going down and clicking texture and then you can see it a lot better a lot easier and so now that this is um, blocked out we just want to refine the shape now Keeping in mind that there is softer forms to this, so there isn't really a hard edge. The hardest edge is probably in the in the center here, and with the um, and the um, the cutout forms here, that's probably the hardest edges here. Um, the rest is just quite soft. So I'm just using Shift S, which is the vertex slide, just to move it along the edge without having to worry about um, going up and down or left to right. It's just simply following the uh, the flow of the edge, which is quite helpful. Just getting some extra loops in there. I'm just activating the soft selection or proportional editing um, and if you use the mouse uh, scroll you can bring down the radius of this the fade so you can just get a bit more accurate with the um, with the um, moving of verts
So I'm using hard ups as well uh, with this. Uh, so I'm just because I, I really like it. I'm going to turn on the EVHQ. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, well, first of all, I'm going to bring it in a little bit to the center because if you look at how thin it actually is, it's not that thick. Um, It looks about right and because I have made a, a change to the scale of the mesh and uh, what I'm going to do is to reset all the transforms so you'll see here the scale is all different here and you want it to be uh, completely zeroed out so I have set that as a shortcut and now it's all one 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 um, and when you do this the um, the origin point goes to uh, zero 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 in the world or in the scene um, and that's okay for now we don't really need to do anything with that um, so I'm just gonna guess at that this edge it looks to follow along quite smoothly so I'm gonna bevel that a little bit and then I'm just gonna sharpen it with hard ups which is smooth as um, all the edges out based on um, um, the angle of the faces and if you look at this here you'll notice there's some grooves here which we'll have to do in ZBrush we just have to imagine what they'll look like uh, there could just be holes in fact um, at the back of the handle but there's quite a large bevel here it's not sharp it's quite um, um, soft edge so we'll just do that now and I'm not using anything too fancy to do this I'm just going to be using um, in fact what I'll do is select all the edges and then mark them clear keeps the um, um, the shading okay and then in fact I want to select all these faces this should work and then select all the edges so now I've just got the outer edges selected here I'm only going to do the side because I'm going to mirror it and then we will uh, do some unique details afterwards um, so just having a look at the reference just going to bevel it before we do that I'm going to bevel these edges here you won't won't really see them but it just uh, prevents it from looking a bit weird when you do this bevel using a mouse wheel to increase the segments I think around about there we'll be fine. Some cleanup that we need to do. Um, and the way I do this is just selecting them all and then uh, merging them at the center and doing the same there. And again there. And coming out of X ray mode, I'm just going to press Alt X which is why I've set up as the mirror and I'm going to click the side that I want to mirror over to the other side rather than clicking this side and it will mirror it now it has made it a little bit um, thinner and we can see in our reference that it is it's a lot wider than that because it has to accommodate for um, the bolt um, bolt carrier So what we'll do is go in X-ray mode, select all these verts and bring them out. You can see um, it um, coming out there as well. So what we'll do with this as well is I'll bring this the other side in towards the center a bit more. And 
There we go. So let's look at these if this needs any uh, cleanup. And you'll notice that the clipping is is hit catching the mesh quite soon, preventing us from getting real close to the vert. So we'll go to view and the clip start will just go as low as possible and voila, it's all good. Using the edge slide or vertex slide just to move these away from each other. You'll notice when this happens, when you sort out the uh, the vertex placement, that the the shading areas disappear. Uh, it's worth going over the mesh before going any further, just to sort out any issues before um, afterwards, just to prevent any issues. Um, Just straightening those up. Okay, that sounds and looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go back into orthographic side view. And we see this is where the cutout is. So I'm just going to save this. Make a new folder. So now, I'm gonna, if I bring up this pie menu and then incremental save, it'll create um, go to gun save underscore zero zero one, and every time you do that, it'll um, increment. So you have stages of the development of the weapon, which is good for backup. Um, and of course, I'll be including these saves in um, in the file. Um, so if you want to ever go through them from a particular stage, you can do. So what we're going to use here is now is probably we could try and use um, hard ups and box cutter to do the boolean operations. If that fails, then what we can do is use ZBrush for the booleans. Um, um, sort of a similar workflow. We don't have, if, it, if we do use ZBrush, we don't have to do much modeling in Blender. And the rest would be in ZBrush. Um, so I'm just gonna activate box cutter um, here. I'm just gonna use the, the box shape and then cut it out straight away. So now if I go to mod scroll and go back, I can now edit this however I want. There are other ways of doing this. Um, yeah, you can do it live, but I prefer to do it this way. Um, I'm going to go into x-ray mode again and just to line things up a little bit better. I'm just going to create um, some extra edges on this. I've um, mapped the loop and cut and slide to shift F. I get this edge and I'm just going to move it down. I 
might get rid of that edge loop there just so it's like that it doesn't matter that it's an end on um it's all good for this boolean that's why i love blender <laughs> Uh, that's done, select the uh, the mesh again. Let's do our other one. Oh, Alt W. And click. It's been a bit of an error here. Uh, that's okay, we can just go mod scroll. And this is what will happen sometimes when you're in orthographic, I find, is that it um, sends the box in a funny shape. If you just open up the, the item tab, uh, tab and then just Put that back to 90 and then 180 and then move it back. Just gonna see. I'm just gonna sharpen it and then bevel. There we go. Increase the edge amounts by using my scroll wheel. Then we're gonna have to sort the mesh out. Maybe if I add a weighted normal, it should fix things, but it hasn't seemingly, which is okay. Um, there we go, I should move that down a little bit, that's a bit better. Now, uh, a tip that I would have for people um, who love their bevels is not to make them too um, tight. Um, and what I mean by that, if I have them super tiny, especially for a game model, it's from far away, say like from third person, it's just going to look like a low poly model um, when you bake down the normal maps. Um, so if you keep them um, looser, uh, a bit more smooth and a bit wider, it has more room uh, from further away to look like a higher uh, detailed mesh. Um, that's probably my one pet peeve with bevels. Um, I'm just going to add a couple of edge, extra edge loops here. You'll notice how it's turned the mesh into a bit of a soup. So we're just going to move this edge over and it's fixed it there and maybe oh, add a loop this way just trying to fix the issues here but it doesn't matter all too much because we'll bring it into zebrush and we will be doing some extra um uh, boolean operations with it uh, which will fix these issues anyway so now i'm just going to try and that should be okay for now. I'm just going to go into x-ray mode again and I'm just going to try and do the shape here. So to do this, I'm going to go into uh, box cutter. And I guess I could try and use the circle. Yeah, let's use the circle for this for now. I'm just going to cut a shape out. Because now if I go to mod scroll and scroll back to it, I can edit it I'm essentially doing the same thing as I did before, but it's almost in reverse. 
I'm just using the verts just to average the place and then we'll bevel them. If we think we need more verts to support the shape, which we probably will do. Okay, um, I still think that might be a bit too wide. Um, looking at the reference, it is a very, very, it is straight going down, but it looks to be very wide. So let's make that adjustment here. Move this over. Now this may affect our boolean somewhat. No, okay, it seems fine. Let's just hide the cutter. So, we've pretty much got that shape down now. So I'm just going to go operation uh, and step. Maybe not. Go back there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go um, visual mesh to visual geometry to mesh. And now we can see all the balloon booleans they've been set in stone now. Um, we're just gonna have to do some cleanup beforehand, just to fix some issues, um, because we want a nice clean mesh for ZBrush. I'm just going to check all the edges, all parts of the mesh, just to make sure it's okay. Yep. And now I don't really want to do that for both sides, so all I'm going to do is just mirror again. And then I'm just going to click this arrow to apply. And there we go. So that's the base mesh for this. Uh, what I'm going to do now is going to create some uh, meshes for some extra boolean um, um, operations in ZBrush. So I'm going to probably start with the dowels. Um, let's just say they go all the way through. Um, so what we can, in fact, no, yeah, let's do that. In fact, yeah, I'm just going to move this down, the shape down a little bit, just so it coincides a bit better with the the reference. So increase my radius of that. The proportional editing.
So you can see where they are. I'm just going to insert a cylinder. Again, I've got that mapped to the uh, quick favorites. Rotate that um, 90 degrees. Scale it down. So these will just act as meshes that will um, boolean the mesh. Um, I'm just wondering with it, because it's quite dark, is it worth going all the way? We can just have a bit of a mesh that ex um, sticks out a little bit on either side. I think I'll just do it like this. Um, all transforms again, and then origin to geometry, which will send uh, the origin back into the middle. And then I'm going to control D, right click. So now I've duplicated the object and it's gone back to the original place. And I'm just going to move it over. To here. And then select both those dowels. Shift, uh, control D again. And then right click. And then bring them over to the side. Transforms again, origins. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of these and then join them together. Again, I've got that saved to my quick favorites. And I'm going to go origin to geometry right in the middle. So there's my dowels. I'm just going to press enter to rename. I think that's how you spell it. Um, re let's rename some of this stuff. So we have the main grip, I'm just going to call it that. Let's just rename the reference, Gorgon underscore ref, just so we don't get confused. And now, if you look on the reference on the top, um, there's got to be space for this cylindrical barrel. So we're going to create a mesh to do just that. We're even going to try, in fact, let's try and boolean it straight from um, um, from Blender, see how, see what happens. Activate box cutter, and then we're going to go into, have the circle and come here to around about here. If you hold control, this is what I got it set to, and scroll down, you can resize the the grid. And what this allows you to do is to go off a grid to, uh, snapping, essentially, and in the center here, I'm just going to draw out a, a circle and just, instead of going all the way, I'm just going gonna, gonna to do this again. Whilst it's drawn out, just let go, then click, and it'll go all the way through. And then mod scroll. Let's go back. Resize it a little bit. It might not even have to be a cylindrical um, boolean. It could be a square. Um, let's just see how this plays with when I sharpen it. I think it needs to be, so if we go like this, select all these, half of these verts here and then bring them down. Oh, let's turn off uh, proportional editing and go into uh, x-ray mode and bring this down. this face out a bit more just to make sure we're not having any crazy intersections that's looking pretty nice actually um, 
Well, what we'll do is because it, the inset goes all the way around here as well. So let's try and use this cutter to do just that. And hopefully it won't look rubbish. So in, in face select mode, select those faces. And what we're going to do is extrude those. Bring them in a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't cause too much issues. it does seem in the reference goes quite high up there and goes quite low down so I'm just going to keep this part just here down to the side so just so I can see it Align that to the X to so it's straight. There might be some cleanup needed here. I'm just going to go into the proportional editing and then click connected only. And then just bring that out. Just so it's a bit more curved, like it is in the reference. Maybe even using that and that edge and bring them in a little bit. Going to turn off proportional editing, bring this down a little bit. Okay, now this looks this is going to look a little bit rough, and that's okay because ZBrush can help us out here. Um, we're going to do our best to fix this these issues though. Let's see what will happen if we connect here. Nope, nothing happened in there. So what we're just going to do, I'm just going to uh, apply all. And then we're just going to fix it manually. X-ray mode to see this. Yeah, some issues there. But all this can be smoothed out in ZBrush. Uh, once we dynamesh it and clean it up that way. Uh, issue here as well.
using a knife tool, I press K for this. You're not going to see any of this on the inside. I'm just being a bit um, particular, I suppose you could say. Let's delete that. Again, I'm just going to mirror it. No, I'm not. Let's sort this out first. In fact, let me apply a weighted normal. There we go. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> and then let's mirror that side over. Let's see what issues are here. Super quick fixes. There we go. In fact, now what we could do, in fact, we could probably boolean these as well. So because we've already created the mesh, what we could do, in fact, is I'm just going to save it and then I'm going to incremental save. Just got to be careful like that. Um, and then what we're going to do is uh, if we select this, the boolean mesh, I'm just going to sharpen it um, and then I'm going to select the target mesh and then I'm pressing Q to bring up the hops menu and then just select difference and then select the target mesh again I'm just going to hide the dowels press sharpen and then bevel you notice that this happens which is not good so I'm just going to go back options on the target mesh. Uh, I'm just going to go not that. Uh, step, not that either. I'm just going to apply everything. Operations, um, step, not that either. Okay, we're going to do it in ZBrush. Okay. So let's load up ZBrush. So before we load up ZBrush, um, we're just going to export this mesh out. I'm just going to select, I'm going to select all the meshes actually, the dowels and the the main grip. And I'm just going to reset all transforms, um, just to make sure it's on uh, zero zero zero. I'm just going to export. Where is that? I've got that as uh, my quick favorites again, just as an OBJ, and then. I go back and then we're just going to create a new folder called base meshes and in here I'm just going to put got a gun base and then I have a, a preset um, called high poly export obj2 which is just it being triangulated and the reason why I triangulate the faces is because when you use booleans, uh, you have engons inherently from Blender. Um, so when you import it into ZBrush, it doesn't always like the fact that it has engons, and so the mesh typically 
uh, becomes unusable, unusable unless you triangulate the faces beforehand. Uh, so we're going to do that in the export. Um, and then we'll just um, Z remesh and then um, everything will be all good again. So here we are in ZBrush. I'm just going to hide this. I'm going to go into Polymesh 3D and import. The gut gun base, drag it out, press T, and we see that's all triangulated. First, we need to separate the dowels from the main mesh. So, I'm going to go into um, polygroups, I'm going to go auto group, and then uh, merge similar groups, and then subtool, split, and then group split. And now the, um, so what we did is basically create two groups. We had the main group for um, the main grip, and then we had the dowels as the second group. And then um, separating those two out, I uh, separated them into diff different um, subtools. So now we need to make the mesh ready for the Boolean action. And at the moment, it's not ready, it, the mesh isn't appropriate at all for this. Uh, it's all triangulated, there's not enough uh, geometry for it, so what we're going to do is we are going to go into geometry, Z remesher, detect edges, groups and creases just in case, double the uh, target poly count and then bring up the adapter size and the curve strength and just click Z remesher and see what happens. There we are, and then that's given us a fairly decent uh, remesh. So what we want to do now is just uh, increase the resolution of that um, by con uh, Control D, and we just want to smooth things out a little bit. Good way to do this is to use polish. We go in deformation and then just click this little icon here and then increase it a little bit and then this will auto smooth out the mesh a little bit for us. And so this process uh, makes Boolean actions in ZBrush uh, and for hard surface modeling really easy. Um, so we're going to do the same process for the dowels because the geometry is awful for a boolean. Um, so we go into um, geometry, detect edges, groups, increases, uh, double size, and increases all the way to 100. And then Z remesh. And now you notice that they've also created polygroups for this and we don't really want that to be honest so I'm just going to group the visible ones together and then we're going to increase the uh, resolution of the mesh and what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, go into deformation and we're going to use polish again right. increase the resolution a little bit more at the moment it's at 80,000 points which is fairly low, really. Okay, so I'm just going to delete the lower subdivision levels because they're not really needed. And we're going to go into subtool. Make sure the main um, group is at the top that we want to create the boolean to. And then, and this is the boolean object. Click this little arrow so everything underneath is affected, it's going to affect the main uh, subtool that's on top. So now anything underneath 
it'll affect um, the main, this, this subtool here. And then we're going to go on live boolean. And now nothing's happened. And that's because we haven't changed it to subtract. And now we have a subtraction. But now we have to actually convert that into uh, a unified mesh. So I have it up here to make boolean, but it's actually in this uh, in this subtool panel here under boolean, make boolean mesh. And this will create a new object here, a new tool. We'll click on that. And we'll see that it's a single mesh now with its own polygroups. But again, um, the geometry isn't really good for sculpting. As you'll see, it's all triangulated here. So to fix that, we can now DynaMesh. I'm just going to turn this to uh, 2048 resolution. Twenty four eight and then hit enter. And in fact before I do that I'm gonna just auto group. So it's one single um polygroup. Then hit down a mesh. There we are. Got plenty of detail, a lot of po uh, polygons. It's about three million triangles or points. So we're just going to smooth this out here. Smooth these edges out a bit more. So now onto the details, but before that, I'm just going to save this out. Now, there's two ways you can save this. And that is you can save it as a tool, which will just save this particular sub tool. Um, um, or you can save the project. Um, I used to save the tools a lot, but I've recently started to save it as um, a doc, uh, the whole document. Um, so I have it set up here. Or if you were to go to uh, file save as you can do it from there and we're just going to go back to the the main folder and I'm just going to create a new folder named uh, zebrush now we'll name the zebrush project and with the project file you'll have all the uh, you'll have both the, the the gun base before the boolean and the unified mesh afterwards. So if you have multiple um, tools in this one project, it will save all the tools together, which is quite handy. Um, I'm just going to call it gutter gun main grip. And I'm just going to save it again. Zero, uh, two. <laughs> so let's bring this reference up and we can start seeing the details here. So just give me one minute whilst I go get my Wacom tablet. So I've got my Wacom tablet now. I'm using my uh, Wacom Intuos Pro. Um, it just makes sculpting a lot more easier. And so we're just going to try and sort of get a similar effect to this. It's quite, it's not really harsh details. It's quite soft. Like it's, it's, it was broken a long time ago and there's a lot of wear to the edges. So it's not as rough. Um, and typically with sculpting wood, I don't really use anything fancy. Uh, I just typically use either the clay build or the clay brush with a square alpha let's move this out of the way a square alpha and that's it and then just use um the um the smoothing afterwards 
So I'm just going to decrease the intensity a little bit. There's another brush that you can use, um, in fact, which I forgot about. You press, um, it's not that, it is. So if you press um, the comma key, it'll bring up the um, this panel here. And if you go to brushes and then to trim, you see trim smooth border. I'm going to load that up with a square alpha as well. See the clay brush was quite soft, whereas with this it's quite a hard edge. And we can just smooth it out afterwards like this. That's what we're going to do. I'm just going to move this over here. Just moving between the two just to Just going to go over these details and sculpt it as best as I can. Smoothing over the edges. And then probably use the, um, if you press H on the brush panel, you'll have the high polish brush. And then that will just sort of push the smoothness to the edges so you get some like nice crisp edges. Just need to bring this down a bit. It's quite low down this. Just making the brush larger just so we can get some nice flatter edges. And then smoothing them out.
Now, the, there's some details like here where it's visibly an indentation. And there's others there. And there's some color variation. It's, it's lighter from the wood that's been untreated from oils underneath. Um, and then there's indentations all over that don't have any color variation because they're, they haven't chipped deep enough. So we can actually leave those smaller details until the texturing phase where we can use some custom height maps um, or pre-made height maps to create those indentations. So I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else that I need to do. There's some indentations here that could be worth doing, possibly. Uh, there's definitely this one here. But there's just these grooves here, which are quite cool. I'm going to see about how to do those. So to do this, all I'm doing is just creating um, essentially I'm just using the clay brush just to make some lines going across. Just some indentations. And then just need to smooth those out a little bit. And using the trim smooth border, just going across and making more of an indentation. Make it a bit more straight and flatter than going across, smoothing it out. doesn't have to be exact because we're using it as inspiration as well as reference um, so if you want to add little details just to change it up a bit then go ahead might be worth just um, sometimes I like to use the damn standard and just creating some nicks here and there just create some nice AO information Gonna smooth some of this out because you can see this you get a little bit faceted even with the dynamesh. Now the other side isn't we don't see it at all. We have a clue that it's less damaged, uh, probably because it's less used in terms of the bolt and the right hand could be the main hand where all the action in the animation could be. Um, so we're going to do some small, smaller damages here. Um, some smaller wear and tears. We can see that it's eroded here or it's like being chipped away there. So let's do that.
Just going to get some damage around the handle. Just so it's not so uniform. <laughs> I don't know what happened then. Some more damage around the dowel holes. Taking a little inspiration from the other side, but we can see here that it's not all that damaged again. There may even be a dowel in there, so that might be a good idea. Just so it's a little bit different, we could insert the dowels. So if we go back to this project here and select the dowels, and this um, asset here, and jump back into um, our project here, and then click append. And then we can see that they're selected there. And we only want half of these, so we're going to select those and deselect them. And then we want to split hidden. Select those ones and then delete. So we can have it that these are flush with it. Just so it's not so uniform and the same on both sides. And we can see here some damage here. And what we can actually see, in fact, is that the, the hole, it seems to go further than we've actually done it, but that's okay. We don't have to do it exact. Um, and we notice that there are some holes there and we don't have to uh, create some new geo to do those booleans. We can um, just reuse the dowels for that if we so chose to. We'll see when we get there. So I'm just going to go and create some detailing that, um, some damage detailing that I have that's not even on here, but I think will just look kind of nice. You don't want to go too overboard with the chips and damage, otherwise it will just look um, like a mess, essentially. <laughs> um, you want it to be believable. Um, and a clue to that is where would it be used most now it seems like on this from the reference it's the right hand side um so um but we can add details similar details but not as much on the other side just a few nicks here and there and some scrapes softening those out so we have to remember it's it, it's an aged, it's an old toy, it's broken. There's not as many sharp um, um, indentations as if they were brand new. Whoops. Just sort of see what like a split dowel would look like. Nice, interesting little detail. Now we could even just 
um, make it like a sloppy little hole here. We'll have to remember that the hand will cover this detail anyway. You have to think about it in that aspect. Uh, what details will be seen and what details won't be seen, what are worth uh, modeling and sculpting. Okay, so I think that will do for now. For this, maybe just put some more details here. Be sure to smooth these edges out a bit more. Just a few dents here and there. Just to show some general usage. Smoothing this out. Uh, I'm just going to use the flatten brush just to smooth this out a bit. And I'm actually going to use the smoothing uh, modifier because it, it will smooth um, the brush out even more. really helpful just to smooth things out when you're sculpting. Okay. So that's this section done for the the main handle. Um, for now, we'll probably we're going to revisit this um, as we go along, just to adjust it um, with the extra uh, mesh details. But what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, uh, create the um, barrel um, slash. Um, bolt carrier where the bullet goes in and shoots the bullet out um so yeah that'll be on the next video thanks q for watching this section